Another example of the fruit of the Spirit is the church in Thessalonica. And when the Apostle Paul writes to the Thessalonians, he tells about how their faith is a shining example to the churches that he visits. Here's the scripture from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Paul writes, We are continually giving thanks to God for all of you, making mention in our prayers, unceasingly remembering your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope of our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God, our Father. The faith of the church in Thessalonica, my friends, their joy, it was not forged in a church that was like a Kincaid painting that's out in the wilderness all by itself, a light in the wilderness. Instead, it bloomed, it blossomed, their faith blossomed amidst, in a city and amidst trouble and strife. The uproar in Thessalonica is described in Acts chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. It, it reads this way, that after Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbaths, <laughs> On three Sabbath days, he argued with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead and saying, this is the Messiah, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul, as did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous. Well, of course they did. They were taking people from the synagogue into a different kind of movement. You know, I take people from my church, I get jealous too. But this group went a step further. They, scripture says, with the help of some ruffians. So they must have gone out and found some people to help them out. With the help of some ruffians in the marketplace, they formed a mob and they set the city in an uproar. And while they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. Jason, the guy who actually invited Paul in and gave them a place to be as they conducted their ministry. So they attacked Jason's house. And when they can't find Paul and Silas, well, they take Jason, they drag Jason and some of the believers before the city's authority shouting, these people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They are all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. Now, thankfully, this day does not end in martyrdom, but it was the kind of day that had to be deeply disturbing for Jason and the others who were finding their way to God through the death and resurrection of Jesus. They had been called out. They had been made a target. They too could have responded with their animal brains. They could have fought or fled or froze. But instead, they chose to respond according to the joy of the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul writes. You became imitators of us and the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So when they received the word, no affliction, no trouble, no public outing and disgrace, nothing could take away their joy because that joy was not grounded in what happened out there. It's grounded in here, in the Holy Spirit work of the soul.
And Paul recognizes this. He, he, he sees it as uh, something that he has experienced himself. He says, you became imitators of us, meaning he too has experienced persecution. He too has experienced much travail in his life, in his years of ministry. But so grounded is he in the spirit, what people see in him is exuberant joy. You know, I see Paul as a man who would jump up and down in the excitement telling people about all that Jesus is and has done. I can hear his infectious enthusiasm as he argues the scriptures in the synagogues. And even when he writes words that seem so terribly angry, like, like you foolish Galatians, even there I hear the exuberance and the come on guys you can do it you know instead of anger it's like come on galatians you can do better i know you can likewise the joy of the thessalonians it cannot be stifled they are so infected by the holy spirit that they cannot be silent their joy is infectious so infectious that Paul announces that you are now a model for all who believe in Macedonia and Asia. You want to live in joy, ground yourself in the Holy Spirit. Well, finally, we come to yet another centurion. Isn't it interesting how scripture uses the centurions in uh, to tell us of the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. So here we have another centurion, and we're going to hear about his faith. Matthew 8 tells this story. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and is in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed. And the centurion, and to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done according for you, according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. Now, I'm talking about Jesus and not the Spirit, you say. But understand in the Gospels, Jesus who becomes the life-giving spirit, he's alive. The character of the spirit is made known through Jesus. They are one, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. They are of the same personality, the same one, the same God made known in three ways. Now the centurion is heartbroken when he comes to Jesus. His beloved servant is paralyzed and is in terrible distress, so says our scripture. And so we can understand this is not just a headache. This is something that makes a man cry out continually in pain. Likely you too have been called to hold someone or a beloved pet when they've cried out in pain that you could not cure, that you could not fix. You know, I would rather move a ton of bricks than have to listen to a beloved's ceaseless cry. But because of the dialogue that ensues, I picture the centurion comes to Jesus as a man who's very strong. He walks upright and he has this confidence of faith. There seems to be no desperation in this outsider, nor is there any embarrassment that he who is not a Jew would ask a rabbi for help. He doesn't flee, he doesn't fight, he doesn't freeze. 
Instead, when Jesus enters the city where the centurion works, a city of Capernaum, the centurion walks right up to Jesus and asks him to give him what he most needs. In that movement, the centurion reveals his faith, faith, another fruit of the Spirit. And so firm is his faith that when Jesus offers to go with him to cure the servant, the centurion says, no need, just say the word and it will be done. And verse 10, and having heard this, Jesus was what? Amazed. He amazed our Lord. Verse 12, Jesus says, go away as you believed, may it be done for you. And the servant is cured in that hour. Now, while we're used to stories in our Gospels of the disciples, and they always seem to be getting it wrong, here the centurion, the outsider, gets it right. Now, the centurion did not sit down and say to himself, I'm going to show those disciples what it means to have faith and go ask for a healing. No, nope. he was moved by a power beyond himself. He yielded to that movement. As you believed, may it be done for you. Faith is yielding control. Faith is allowing yourself to be moved by a power that's stronger than you. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. If you seek to live by faith, you ground yourself in spirit. And so I want us to take a moment to imagine grounding our souls in the Spirit. I want you to imagine your soul as a little seed. And you take it and you plant it into the soul's garden. You dig a hole and you put some dirt over it. Release it, put some dirt over it. And from spirit, you receive water. And the sun warms the earth. You don't have to get those things. They're provided for you. So just rest in there in peace. All that is needed is provided. Now imagine your soul sprouting up, reaching out beyond the earth, getting taller and taller. Imagine that exuberance of life as the leaves start to grow and come off and the branches and it becomes filled with foliage. Imagine the, the joy of that soul growing up and out, reaching further towards the sky. That, my friends, is an image of joy. And now imagine the flowers starting to bud and starting to bloom and opening up, beckoning its desire for more and trusting that the spirit will send the pollinators. They will come, they will pollinate. The spirit will send what you need in order for those blossoms to turn into fruit, which gives others life. This is an image of faith. So stop a moment and take a look at the fruit of your soul. And I don't mean to have you think about yourself as a watermelon or a little grape. I want you to look at what emanates out of you. Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it faith? Stop a moment and look at the fruit of your soul, the fruit of your living. Appreciate, my friends, 
what is growing in you and what is growing out, what you are giving out to the world. Because you've been doing this for a while now, seeking to walk by the Spirit. And sometimes for us to move forward, it helps us to see what has been done, to see what your life has already produced. Maybe to seek more of a different kind of fruit of the Spirit. Maybe you're like me and your spirit is just naturally one that produces joy, but you seek to be more a person of peace. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're just so peaceful and what you want is more joy. I always think we could all use more faith, more blossoming and waiting for God to do what needs to be done so that we can bear the fruit into this world. But recognize that God has already started a good work in you and God indeed will be faithful to complete it. Know this, my friends, live by the Spirit and allow the Spirit to make you fully alive. In Christ Jesus, I pray, amen.